Hey, what's up guys? This is Sam here with CustomPCReview.com here at LSI AIS 2012. And we're here with Joe here with uh, Everspin Technologies. He's the Director of Product Marketing. And he's going to show us some exciting new stuff uh, happening at Everspin Technologies. And uh, so I'm going to have you take it away, Joe. All right, Sam, thank you very much. What I'd really like to tell you about today is what we've announced this week. And we are here at the LSI AIS Summit as an opportunity to introduce our 64 megabit DDR3 SpinTorque MRAM. This is the world's first commercial product that you will see for SpinTorque MRAM. And we are announcing that we have begun sampling of our initial customers, our select customers. And here at the LSI Summit, uh, we, we are happy to say also that LSI was one of the first to receive working samples and they have created a demonstration here using their MegaRate platform in which uh, at an engineering demo level you'll see here a memory module which looks very similar to a DDR3 DRAM module but it contains our 64 megabit DDR3 SpinTorque MRAM and the demonstration is showing what the benefit is of having now a new memory technology that offers the speed of DRAM at DDR3 data rates, but also the persistence and non-volatility of NAND flash. So now we have a new technology that offers a high data rate with very high endurance and long data retention, but also non-volatility. And what this is attractive to from an enterprise storage standpoint is that we now have the opportunity to eliminate uh, external energy sources such as batteries or supercapacitors that are used now and that's a huge reliability enhancement and there's a very strong customer pull at the enterprise storage level to enhance the reliability of these systems so we think MRAM is going to be an excellent way to, to do so especially now that we're getting higher densities at 64 megabit where we start thinking about using the MRAM as cache uh, and, and replacing some of the DRAM that is used there today. Uh, so the, uh, the other thing about this is that I'll show you real quick is that, you know, as an Everspin Technologies, we create the, the MRAM chip itself. We can place that on DIM modules, but we've also got evaluation boards that our customers can now use at an FPGA level to talk to these parts. So we're building the ecosystem along with controller IP. Uh, and then just a quick look at the technology itself. Here uh, on the right is the SpinTorque bit illustration showing the MTJ, the magnetic tunnel junction, and the structure of that inside of the memory chip itself. Uh, all I really wanted to say about this is that this type of technology and structure we think is going to be very scalable. So our first chip is coming out at 90 nanometers, which is fairly conservative from a memory technology standpoint. Uh, and now with this uh, spin torque cell having been developed, we think it will scale quite rapidly down the technology curve. So our roadmap will suggest that we will get to higher densities, 256 megabit, 1 gigabit, and 4 gigabit, and beyond. And that really opens up a whole new uh, way of thinking about how spin torque can actually change the whole memory hierarchy where you now have high capacity, persistent, non-volatile, high data rate memory available. And uh, that's what the exciting uh, uh, feature holds for us here at Everspin Technologies. All right, Joe. So is SpinTorque a uh, Everspin Technologies um, uh, proprietary kind of product? Well, SpinTorque itself is, is an industry technology. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. But we do have proprietary techniques in how we construct the MTJ, the magnetic tunnel junction, and the materials involved, proprietary techniques about how we do the actual circuit and chip design. Mm -hmm. So putting that all together into a commercial product, Everspin has an excellent mm -hmm. position from having been working on this for over 15 years from the roots of Motorola R&D, we then spun out of Freescale and have been working on this technology and have commercialized it and, and are shipping high volume today. But for the spin torque, we're, we're taking that kind of learning that we've had from our production experience as well. So when you put it all together, we, we think we've got the right ingredients, mm -hmm. the right IP and the know-how mm -hmm. to actually make this a commercial product. And that's why we're, we're first and we'll think we'll be first to production volumes as well. Okay, excellent. And um, I know MRAM is a relatively new technology. 
Um, do you have, can, can you discuss a little bit about maybe the, the challenges of uh, implementing uh, MRAM at all? Right. Well, one of the challenges is that uh, the, the construction of the MTJ itself requires a very good thin film processing and, and a very good knowledge of the materials itself that, that make up the fixed and free layers of magnetics that, that actually bring uh, a, a data state capability to fruition. So we have to have sufficient en energy barriers to to provide good signal margin. We have to have very good process control such that we can get good high yields. And these are the things that we've worked out over a few years of production experience now. Uh, so um, from that standpoint, uh, what we uh, will also say is that while we have uh, very good expertise around building the magnetics, mm -hmm. the base CMOS wafer is actually a standard CMOS foundry logic wafer where we build the magnetics on top. So the base wafer itself, fairly straightforward, fairly available from the industry, and that's why we think we'll be able to scale this technology quite readily. As we work on the magnetics and get that down to a smaller scale, the CMOS is already on the path to 40 nanometers and below, and that'll be able to allow us to offer the higher densities on a, on a curve faster than you might see under normal DRAM or NAN type of next generation developments. Okay. All right. Is there uh, any information on when this would be available, say, uh, if somebody wants to implement this kind of technology, uh, when it be available, any pricing figures at all? Right, right. So, so we're not yet prepared to announce our production schedule. We'll be mm -hmm. doing that over the next few months as we mature the technology and make sure that what we're sampling is what is going to be sufficient to get us to the production level specs. Mm -hmm. However, from a, from a positioning standpoint, if you think about this, uh, the densities don't match that yet of DRAM. Mm -hmm. So our cost per bit is, is considerably higher. You can think about it in terms of 100x higher than a cost per bit compared mm -hmm. to DRAM. Yeah. So what that means is that there's really got to be some type of value add to use this product. It's not going to replace standard DRAM and notebooks or tablets yeah. for quite some time. <laughs> yeah. But in the enterprise space where those reliability features are so important, uh -huh. it, it's, it's actually quite competitive at a total cost system standpoint because we're eliminating things like batteries or supercapacitors and other yeah. complexities in the system that are required to, to protect the data and we are going to protect it inherently just by the nature of having it stored magnetically on the RAM itself. Okay, all right, Joe. Is there uh, anything else you would like to add uh, about Everspin Technologies or anything like that? Well, well, thanks for that opportunity, Sam. Again, just the fact that we are actually in production today of MRAM chips, and they're going into a variety of different applications. Uh, data storage is a huge application for us. Industrial computing, industrial automation, smart energy meters, anywhere you have uh, the need to do rapid data logging and capture of data and store it reliably and would like to eliminate batteries or supercapacitors, this is a great solution. We've got a whole lineup of products up through 16 megabit that we're shipping in production today. Mm -hmm. And now, as the first to commercialize the spin torque, we think that the future looks real, really, really good for us in terms of being able to get into a whole new, broader market at enterprise storage and above. All right, Joe, well, thanks for the interview. And uh, we're going to be back for more coverage of LSI AIS 2012. Stay tuned. PNY recently revamped our entire lineup of high performance solid state drives. Everything from consumer to high end workstation solid state drives are available currently today for you to purchase. So, whether you're thinking about replacing your hard disk drives with the new solid state drive, our Accelerate sub brand is ideal because it's entry level um, and it's great for the consumer thinking, I just want to experience what SSD is like for the first time. Gamers can look to our Accelerate Pro lineup and high end.